Why do most moons orbit their planets at the equator? Because I'm just talking a bit about how the moon really has a lot to do with Earth's atmosphere. We always talk about the sun heating up the solar system. Okay, we know that. But in consideration to the moon as to Earth, how is it helping or not helping, if you want, or affecting the atmosphere here on Earth? Uh, that movement of the bulge I, I was talking about leads to friction and heat. So that friction acts to try to stop the moon from going up and down, that is, decrease its inclination or make its orbit around the equator of the planet. So it's, you know, back and forth. It's creating a lot of heat and friction. So now I can speak about something really, really interesting is that about the tides, you know, what is it with the tides? You know, why is the moon locked and why are the tides uh, manipulated because of, you know, the moon? Well, uh, a moon feels a gravitational pull from Earth, right? Or from any planet that the moon's around. And the pull is, that I'm talking about is stronger on the near side of the moon as to the far side. So the moon gets pulled into uh, Earth at the same time, but it also has the same differential pull back. So it's pushing back at the same time, the to and from, if you want. So it exerts the same sort of differential pull on Earth. Um, and this is why they say that we have ocean tides. The shift, polar shifts, right? This is why I even came into this. Geomagnetic reversal. That's what I want to talk about. Geomagnetic reversal. It's a change in the planet's magnetic field. And this is what's occurring with Earth, the moon, or whatever. A possibility, let's just say. Such that the positions of our magnetic north and magnetic south are interchanged not to be confused with geographic north or geographic south it's another situation the earth's field has altered between periods of normal polarity in which the predominant direction of the field was the same as the present direction and we have reverse polarity in which was the opposite these periods are called crones and let's talk about this, this is really interesting reversal occurrences are statistically random they have been a hundred there there has been so they say 183 reversals over the last 83 million years and we know because we were there right uh no we weren't there but this is what science says because again science is theory itself that's what i say but anyways they say the last one would have occurred 780,000 years ago with widely varying estimates of how quickly it happened so there's a uh, um a wide variety of different uh, theories from scientists on exactly what could have occurred. But let it be known that um, the duration of a full reversal, typically they say, science says, is between 2,000 to 12,000 years. So I often encounter these little situations where things don't make sense to me. I'm not a professional, no. I'm not a genius. But let me tell you, when they tell me, science tells us that, you know, possibly vegetation could have existed on Mars a long time ago, I have a problem with that. Considering that, um, you know, most stars tend to increase in luminosity as they get older. This is due to their, uh, the core inside of them, right? It becomes more dense, it expands, and then it gets hotter over time. So I don't understand the 4.5 billion years ago, how could there have been any sign of vegetation if, you know, the sun would have been a lot fainter? Would it have not? So if it's, things are starting to thaw now, well, 4.5 billion years ago, would it have not been colder? Well, I don't know. Because on Mars, it is said, scientists say that four point, around 4 billion years ago on, the, on Mars, there was an atmosphere and warm enough to support life and that there could have been vegetation and everything. But I have a problem with that again because the sun was fainter. Why are things frozen now if they weren't in the past? Well, that's what brings us into where we are now um, in time. We're in the Ice Age, the beginning of the Ice Age, another Ice Age. So briefly, we are, yeah, in the Ice Age. 
but an ice age, it's a long period of reduction in the temperatures. It's not over day, right? Not over one day of the Earth's surface and also the atmosphere. So it results in the presence of or expansion of continental and polar ice sheets. That's what we see on Mars. For example, when we look at uh, the sheets, there's both, both ice sheets in the northern and southern hemisphere. Um, Earth's Climate altern alternates between ice ages and greenhouse periods, during which there are no glaciers on the planet. But now here's the thing. Earth is currently um, in the ice age right now, but at which stage? Well, I'm telling you, it's the interglacial stage. That's where we're at. The interglacial period is a warm period within an ice age, and that's exactly what uh, we are experiencing, I believe. One important factor is the amount of light Earth receives from the sun. Scientists are still studying and don't even know why ice ages occur. They occur more than once and they have long lasting periods of sometimes tens and even 20 million years. The amount of sunlight that reaches Earth can vary quite a lot, they say, mainly due to three factors. How much Earth is tilted, hmm, we're talking about the tilt, relative to the sun, always relative the sun whether earth wobbles a lot or a little and it's as it's spinning on its axis um, and also the shape of earth orbit as it goes around the sun whether it's shaped as a circle or an oval i'm dead serious um you know no kidding about this uh now let's go to the surface of the moon hey apollo 11 supposed moon landing area we can see even a part of Apollo 17, Mons Argeus, on the very right there. As we're scrolling by, slowly I got some music up. And this week we're going into uh, the surface of the moon and um, closer than I usually get. So we're going to push it this week. I'm going to move in progressively in this video and then we'll issue a couple of other, other videos really close. I'm always mixing it up, right? All right, who wants to abuse the telescope? Let's abuse this baby. Let's get in there. We'll get in more and more progressively close, but uh, you know, let's let's enjoy getting in. Well, I sort of really like that song. It was really, really popping. But you know what? We were really not close enough. Let's get in even closer. I want to see um, Eratosthenes crater just at the end of the mountain range. Here's Aristillus and Autolycus, where we see that square on the edge of the crater. And look what's underneath the crater. We could see that other triangular shape. Uh, okay, right. Let's get that music back up, but let's get in even closer.
Is the moon gray? Who <laughs> no. closer thanks everyone for the ongoing support and if you want to keep this channel going thanks for the shares come back every day if you can and speak about the channel thanks everyone this is my mailing address